Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Kishore from Tested. Kishore, today you're gonna to be joined by Zeke Cussover from the Exploratorium. He's a former high school teacher that now teaches other science teachers on how to do better science demonstrations and better science teaching in their classrooms. And he's joining us today to demonstrate a whole litany of science experiments that demonstrate some fundamental physics principles. And the amazing thing is the setup for these experiments, not too complicated, but the payoff, Pretty cool. Yeah, so we hope you enjoy the process of how these demonstrations are built and then executed. Here's a great science experiment you can do with one of my favorite things on planet Earth, liquid nitrogen. And Zeke Kossover from the Exploratorium is here to give us a demo that's probably a little bit different than what you normally see with liquid nitrogen. Uh, Zeke is a teacher at the Exploratorium and Liquid nitrogen is one of my favorite things. How about you? It's one of my favorites as well. So before we get into any of the experiments, let's talk about liquid nitrogen itself in terms of handling, safety, availability. So let's start with availability. Uh, it's usually sold by welding supply stores. So pretty available at, in most urban areas around the country. Yes. And in terms of cost, is it relatively affordable? No, it's kind of expensive. It's about three to four dollars a liter. And how much do you need to actually do some experience at home? You usually need to do between like five and 10 liters of Just it. Just because it's gonna uh, sublimate and evaporate really It evaporates, quickly. yeah, almost everything. And in terms of what you need to buy it, do you need any sort of special license or anything you, you like that? You don't need a license, but you do need a device called a doer, which is a very advanced uh, uh, thermos, if you will. Um, and uh, they are pricey. They tend to be in like the five to $600 range. But in terms of, there are smaller doers you can get that are a little bit cheaper, yeah. but you don't need any special license. So you can get it, most people will be able to get liquid nitrogen if they can get a doer or find a, a friend with a doer. Yeah. In terms of safety, talk about liquid nitrogen and how cold it is. So uh, liquid nitrogen is about uh, 200 degrees Celsius below zero. Um, so it's incredibly cold. Um, it will very quickly freeze you, give you frostbite. Um, if you're wearing clothes that it can soak into, like you spill it onto your clothes and it soaks into it and then touches your skin, I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed frostbite, if not really much worse than that. So in terms of how you handle it, you have a doer over off to the side, and we have another containment unit for actually manipulating smaller amounts of it. Correct. And then you have gloves for actually pouring out the liquid. I do have gloves, although in general, if you aren't gonna have to fish around into it, it's actually better to have bare skin for splashes on you because you're so hot compared to the liquid nitrogen that it instantly evaporates off of you. So as opposed to having something that can trap it in next right. to your skin. So like, you know, clothing can trap it. The, the joke is, is that liquid nitrogen is safest when handled when you are completely naked. <laughs> That's not gonna happen in this video. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but there's one other safety thing I would like oh, to yeah. do before we go on. And that is, you can sort of see how this lid is loose on air. Trapping liquid nitrogen in a contained a uh, bottle of any sort is the end of your days. Because the pressure is gonna build up. Right, when it goes from a liquid to a gas, it expands by 800 times. So even like a few, uh, even if you put like three milliliters in a two liter bottle, that will fill the bottle with nitrogen and 10 or 15 milliliters in a two liter bottle will blow the bottle up and it is nothing you will forget about. If you were to put it into like a metal thermos, it could, when that blows up, that could definitely kill you. So what are some of the classic things that people do with liquid nitrogen? So a classic one is like freezing uh, 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 rubber and plastic and discovering that they get brittle. So we'll put a little liquid nitrogen in this little doer right here. And then we'll put this Koosh ball. One of my favorites. Mm. Koosh ball probably harder to find than liquid nitrogen these yes. days. <laughs> and then we'll... Oh wow, really quickly we're gonna I'm we'll pour a little on top just to really make sure it's nice and nice and cushy. Oh, that's lost all of its cush life. Yeah, now it's a. Uh... Oh, that cush ball is no longer fun. It doesn't do the bouncy thing anymore. It's a little bit sad. 
And that's because the rubber, which was able to stretch and move around, is now sort of frozen in place. Even though it doesn't have any water in it, mm -hmm. it's, it's held uh, in a particular spot, so it's not stretchy anymore. But given enough time... Yeah, it'll return, it'll to, return to normal. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you've probably seen people like smash flowers with things like with it as well. Absolutely, using the fact that it's so cold. Exactly, exactly. But yeah. it's also nitrogen. Is there anything else we can do with so, nitrogen? So that's actually one of the more interesting things about liquid nitrogen is that it's pure nitrogen and doesn't have any oxygen inside of it. So and as opposed to the atmosphere, which has 20% oxygen. Correct, in it. correct. And so... Um, it lets us, it let me once do a demonstration with my students that uh, surprised them. We were discussing these old school incandescent filament light bulbs. Um, and inside of it, there's a little thin uh, metal wire made of tungsten. Um, and then there's this glass globe around the outside of it. And I was trying to ask my students, like, why do you think the glass is on the outside of it? And they said, the glass is there because the filament gets very hot and they don't want people to burn themselves and they don't want a lawsuit. Yeah, oh, that actually seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, except Edison kind of invented the light bulb sort of before there were lawsuits in that <laughs> okay. way. Um, so the, actually the reason is, is that the filament gets so hot when we plug it in that if there were oxygen in there, the filament would actually catch on fire. We don't think about metals catching on fire, but give them sufficiently hot and they will actually burn. And that's what would happen. So inside the glass globe in there, there is no oxygen on the inside. Is it filled with a different gas? It's often filled with nitrogen gas because nitrogen is cheap, it's available all around us, and there's no oxygen in nitrogen gas. So I wanted to show my students that that's actually how that worked but I wasn't exactly sure how to do it. And then oh. I had an idea. <laughs> All right, so I was a high school teacher for a long time. Anyway, <laughs> I remembered that liquid nitrogen has no oxygen in it. So what I could do is I could break the, gla the globe off the top and submerge the filament in liquid nitrogen and then the filament would just glow happily even while it was in the liquid nitrogen. And it's glowing happily not because of the temperature. No, but because, it, but because there's no oxygen inside the liquid nitrogen. And then it's a very memorable thing to see the filament uh, glowing while it's still in a liquid, while it's under a liquid. So let's give that a try. The hardest part is actually taking the glass off of it. So this is a specialty glass cutter that you have here, bottle yeah. cutter? Yeah, this is a this is a, a, a pipe cutter. Oh, pipe cutter for a relatively large pipes. And then if we screw this down, and then very gently, we can just crack the gla the glass. Oh, you're not even rotating it around. All right, I'm just going to smash it off, but I'm going to leave the filament intact. Mm -hmm. Now, will you pour some liquid nitrogen into this? Uh, Absolutely. Beaker. I'll put a little more. That enough? Yep, yeah, that's great. And so then if I put this inside of here and then plug it in. Oh, look at that. That's great. So it happily burns underneath the uh, layer of liquid nitrogen because there's just no oxygen then for it to catch on fire. Now the filament it must still be getting hot. So what is happening? Is the so, liquid actually touching? Yeah, so when it touches it, it boils it away and pushes it away so fast that the liquid nitrogen can't really touch the filament. Um, and so there's like a sort of a globe of gaseous nitrogen around it. And then if I pull it out of the liquid nitrogen, then it burns up in the air and burns out. So it still, it still went for a little bit, not just be, because it had still a little bit of that nitrogen bubble around yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's a great way to show how conductivity can really work in, in a modern uh, age. This, yeah. So the hardest part about this is really getting an incandescent bulb. Those are getting kind of they're, challenging they're getting to find. They're harder to find by, but this is a great way to teach both a, a chemistry reaction and a physics reaction in one simple thing. Thanks, Zeke. Thanks. Where can more people find out about this experiment and others like it? So they can go to www.exploratorium.edu or they can come visit us at Pier 15 on the Embarcadero in San Francisco. Thanks again, Zeke, and we'll Thank see you. you next time. I'm gonna make the pun. You're a doer, Kishore. <laughs> you did things. Liquid nitrogen is fun, but what I loved about this experiment is it's something you'd never see usually done with liquid nitrogen. I know, Will and I used to break flowers 
with liquid nitrogen, freeze things, smash them, but this was a whole different thing. It's fun, I mean, everyone uses liquid nitrogen because it's cold, but we used it because it's nitrogen for once. And I loved showing that, uh, the, the sort of conductivity and, and sort of the chemical reaction that is actually happening inside of a light bulb if you expose it to air. Awesome, and it's something that I, I can actually try at home. Again, if you're gonna try this, please be careful taking apart the incandescent light bulb. This one especially because liquid nitrogen handling is definitely something you want to be careful of and read up on before you take on that project. This is definitely something you want an expert with you if it's your first time handling liquid nitrogen ever. So thankfully we did have an expert with us, Zeke Kosover. Thank him for joining us for this episode. If you have more experiments you'd like to see us test out, please leave a suggestion, comment below. But until next time, it's Kishore, I'm Norm. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.